Senator, thanks for coming on KTNV. I really you appreciate bet. it. You bet, John. Glad to be here. A couple stories that have come out in the last 24, 48 hours I want to ask you about. Mm -hmm. One is New York Times did an in-depth piece over the weekend about the Clinton Foundation talking about uh, uh, whether or not the, the uh, President Hillary Clinton mm -hmm. would stop taking donations. What is the difference, though, ethically from taking those donations while she was Secretary of State and taking them after she becomes President? What's the difference? Well, I think, you know, the, there was an announcement by the Foundation last week that I thought was a very positive one. This is a foundation that A, does good work, and B, discloses its donors. And what they've said is, if Hillary Clinton is elected, we will no longer accept corporate or uh, any contribution from anybody with foreign connections. Um, even though we've been disclosing those, we're going to stop doing that, but we're going to continue to do the good work that the foundation does all over the world. And I think, I think that's an appropriate um, change in the policy. Well, uh, was it appropriate for her to take those foreign donations while she was Secretary well, when you State, say for her to? For, for she didn't. For the Clinton didn't. Foundation to take it. To, was to, it do, to do the work that the foundation was doing, sure. Look, this is a, an organization that is battling to make sure people ha uh, have access to AIDS drugs that are critical critically important. This, every day this foundation is doing good things that are lightening people's burdens and uh, the contributions of NGOs like the Clinton Foundation is something really great that we do for the world and it's an organization that does good work and it, it ought to be able to continue to do good work. You don't work. think there was an inherent conflict? You know, D Donald Trump is saying S shut it down, they're saying pay to play. I don't think any of that has been proven Yeah, no, none of that's been borne but, out. But does it, not, does it not smell to people when you have some bad actors, bad foreign actors who have been shown to be bad foreign actors contributing to the Clinton Foundation while she was Secretary I, of State. I, I don't think it does because, again, of the work that the Foundation is doing, this humanitarian work. It absolves of everything. I'm can't, look, I'm campaigning everywhere, and, and I was campaigning for months before I got added to the ticket. Nobody is asking me about the Foundation because people understand the work that the Foundation was doing. They're asking about all kinds of issues, but that's not an issue. And, again, it's because of the, uh, the good work that the Foundation does. Are you calling me a nobody, sir? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah. I understand this may not be, be, an, be an issue to most voters. They may yeah. have on top of mind what mm -hmm. you talked about today, jobs, et cetera. But it is contributing, and you've seen the polls, to these perpetual dishonesty numbers that are plaguing uh, uh, the, the Secretary of State, including here in Nevada. Donald J. Trump goes out and, you know, tries to make the foundation into something mysterious. The foundation discloses its donors. Donald won't release his tax returns. I mean, he's trying to deflect attention. Now, there is some degree to which you say it over and over again. People have a question, but the, the reason I'm out there campaigning and people aren't asking me about this is I just don't think it's, it, it's not the thing that they're concerned about. They really are concerned here in Nevada, in Virginia, and elsewhere. Okay, well, how are we going to grow the economy? How are we going to be safe? And are we going to have a community that respects people or one that divides people? So you're not concerned about it? You've talked to her about it? You don't think it's an issue. I, I got asked last week about, hey, what should happen after the election? And I said, well, I think the foundation has to grapple with that question. And then the announcement by the foundation last week I thought was a really good way to say, okay, uh, after election, there will be a different reality. Should we win? And that means the foundation has to adjust too. And I thought that was appropriate. I know this is another topic you want to talk about, but uh, the, there was a disclosure this morning uh, in the national media that there's 15,000 mm -hmm. more emails that, that, that were found that maybe uh, should have been turned over in, in the first place. Does this concern you? Does this whole issue of the emails, the private server concern you at all? I'll start with the punchline and then talk about the, the thing this morning. I, I have have been with Hillary personally on a number of occasions and I've also seen her say hey I made a mistake and I've learned from it and I do it differently and, and I will do it differently and she's taken responsibility and said it was a mistake and um, hey, I make mistakes. And so the fact that she said that over yeah, and over isn't again. leaving your, your suit coat at home. You're making yeah, it, but you're missing it like it's just a minor mistake. Well, it's, it's pretty it, serious, it, it, isn't it? You know, again, in terms of what voters want to talk about, what they're really concerned about, uh, using an email account so you do work at home. I mean, that's not the top the mind issue for them. Been honest about it, though. I mean, you saw that Colin Powell came out uh, and said uh, her campaign is trying to pin this email scandal on me. He implied uh, almost that she wasn't truthful with the FBI in the sense that she was using this a year before he actually uh, uh, told her that she should have her personal Re service. Rather than comment on what somebody else says, I mean, just the issue is, she says, I've made a mistake, and I've learned from it, and I do it differently. And, you know, I've watched the other guy. I don't see him admitting mistakes, saying I made a mistake at this or that. This, this is something that a mature person does. A, we all make mistakes, and a mature person will say, okay, I made a mistake, and I've learned from it. And I've been sitting, you know, right next to her, interviewing 60 Minutes and elsewhere, and I heard her say it. Take full responsibility. I've learned something. 
you know, I'll improve. And I, and I believe that to be true. Uh, you, you have had, I assume, conversations with her. You talked during your rally, mm -hmm. but when she called you and asked you, yeah. be, I mean, mm -hmm. did you say, are there any, is there anything I need to know? Is there anything uh, that I, I've gotten another to, shoe to drop? I've gotten to know her very well. I have a high confidence in her. I, John, I've, sa I've said this before, and I really deeply believe it. If you're going to look at the character of somebody in public life, I think the most important thing to do is to look and see if they have a deep passion that developed before they were in politics. And then over the course of a political life, wins and losses, in office, out of office, have they, held, have they held on to what motivates them and animates them? And if you see that, that is something that tells me I'm going to have trust and confidence in this person. Hillary Clinton has that from being motivated in her Methodist youth group as a teenager, this consistent theme, how can we value families and children? How can we measure them and use that as a proxy for how well society is doing? This is a consistent thing that showed up long before she was in office that still is what fundamentally animates her. And that gives me very, very high confidence in her. Most important thing you said at that rally, in my, in my opinion, mm -hmm. unbiased opinion, is Nevada is really, really important. <laughs> uh, I'm so, sure you were like <laughs> stunned to hear uh, that I, coming I was, out of my was, mouth. But, but I guess it's interesting because you're doing yeah. a rally here. You spoke uh, t to union folks. Yeah, uh, uh, so, uh, Hillary Clinton's coming she, two days, I think, she's coming later in the week. up north on mm -hmm. Thursday. Uh, it's clear that the campaign thinks that Nevada is still very much yeah. in play and that the labor vote, that the Hispanic right. vote is, is very important. Are you Critically worried about important. Nevada? Nevada should be leaning towards you. How can how come it's not? We, we, we've always thought, look, we've always thought Nevada is typical battleground. I mean, you know, it, its place in the primaries is because it, it has an outsized importance. That's why it's in the first four. Um, and it is a state that we always think of as a battleground. We think of it that way in presidential races. We think of it that way in Senate races, like the Senate race that's going on now. Hillary said from the beginning, and I certainly told her when I encouraged her to run in April of 2014, I don't care what anybody tells you, you're the underdog until you're the winner because you're trying to do something that nobody's ever done. We've assumed this would be hard everywhere. We've assumed it would be hard in Nevada. And uh, we just got to make our case, and especially making our case around these economic issues, the vast difference between uh, your hired president and Hillary Clinton or your fired president and Donald Trump, the vast difference in their tax plans. We, we got to sell. We got to make our case every day. And that's not because we're worried. That's what voters are entitled to. They're the, entitled to have us make our case. The Hispanic vote obviously is going to be critical. Hugely in important. The states. It, mm -hmm. it, it has been in Nevada the last two uh, presidential cycles. I, I see that Donald Trump has put off his big new immigration speech for, for yeah. a few days. <laughs> Do you think he can, by by if he does flip-flop and now says he believes in some kind of humane treatment uh, of, of undocumented uh, folks, that he can change I the don't. whole dynamic? You don't. I don't. I, I it's the palabras de mala voluntad, the words of ill will. You know, when, when, when Donald Trump decided to go after Judge Curiel um, and went after him by citing his Mexican-American heritage, I mean, this is a guy who, who was a, an award-winning U.S. prosecutor before he is a very well-respected judge. But none of that mattered to Trump. The only thing that mattered to him was he was Mexican-American. And Trump's used negative language against Governor Martinez of New Mexico or against some, a, a new immigrant just coming you across the border. The bell? Is that what you're saying? I don't think so. When you say that you know, the Mexican immigrants coming here are criminals and rapists, and you're painting with that big negative brush, I know the way my Latino community in Virginia feels about this. And frankly, I know the way other new American communities, not Latinos, feel about it. They kind of feel like, well, he's attacking Mexican-Americans, but it's really an attack on immigrants generally. So, you know, over the weekend, there was some suggestion he might be doing something different. He's, it's going to be a more humane deportation, I guess. But he has said again and again, build the wall, empower the deportation force, split up families. That, that is uh, very locked in people's minds. Senator Kane, appreciate the time. Thanks, John. Yeah, good to be with you.